Oh, shoot. Hey, everyone. Henry Yellow here. Welcome back. Right now, we are going to watch Death Trap from 1982, directed by Sidney Lumet. Right now, this is my final round for Sidney Lumet. Uh, for those who don't know, actually, I'm doing a three directors run, which is Billy Wilder, Sidney Lumet, and Fritz Lang. I've been doing it for the past few weeks. And right now, we are reaching the end. So this will be my final round of Sydney Lumet movie reactions. And then after this, it'll be the final round of Fritz Lang, a few more Fritz Lang movies, and then a final round of a few more Billy Wilder movies. After that, I will be moving on to new directors. Some of you may realize that there are still a few more uh, Billy Wilder, maybe even Sydney Lumet and Fritz Lang movies, which I haven't watched. Now, I plan to watch those later on as a Patreon special, which means they will be exclusively Patreon reactions. So you can go ahead and check out my Patreon to see which special movie reactions are exclusively on my Patreon. You can also go ahead and subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so you know when new reactions are coming out because I will be reacting to a lot more movies and to a lot more directors in the future. Right now, let's get into Death Trap. Are you ready? Let's go. Ira Levine's Death Trap. Oh, okay. It's the worst play I've ever seen. I can't believe Sydney Brown wrote it. How do people ever dry swallow their pills? I could never do that. It's not a disaster. They're laughing, aren't they? Are they laughing? Who could ever have believed it would end this way? Who? Who? Bad sets, bad costumes, bad direction, bad actors, and from playwright Sidney Brule, a spectacularly bad play. They weren't real raves, Sidney, but they certainly weren't what I call bad. I'm doing the only sensible thing. I'm getting pissed. And I'll see you in East Hampton in the morning. He missed his stop. Montauk. One movie that I watched that had a Montauk again, was it Fargo? Ah! Oh! Every oh, time man. I come in this bloody house, you scream! Why'd you take a limousine? Because I can no longer afford a bloody limousine! Of course you can. I can and everything I have is yours. Myra, I have had four bums in a row. Ooh. And you know they deserve to bum because they stank. I passed out in the train, and I came to in the terminus at Montauk. End of the line. Bloody symbolic. Darling, you're a <sighs> wonderful, wonderful <sighs> writer. To add bloody insult to injury, this came to the theater tonight. A thriller in two acts, an ironic and astonishing resolution, and easy to cast. <laughs> okay. Darling, what's funny? It was written by some ignorant infant asshole in the seminar I gave last year at college, Clifford Anderson. Please excuse the carbon copy. The local Xerox machine is on the fritz. I couldn't stand the thought of waiting a few days to send my firstborn child off to its spiritual father. Okay. William's way to throw up. Why? That's nice. I think I remember him. Obese. Is, is it really that good? It, it couldn't be, could it? Even a gifted director couldn't hurt it. Don't make me worry about you every time you're out of my sight. He's worried about you. What I should do is beat the fat bastard over the head with that mace over there <laughs> and then send his little masterpiece off under my own name. Oh, that's evil. I mean, what's the point in owning a mace if you don't use it? <laughs> well, have you thought about collaboration? I don't want any help in killing Clifford Anderson. I want to strike the blow myself. Oh my God, I think he's being serious. Don't tell me that an absolute amateur wouldn't be thrilled at the chance of working with you. The author of The Murder Game, the longest running thriller in the history of Broadway. Oh, well, nothing recedes like success. Or hairlines. <laughs> you don't like the mace? No, blood in the carpet. And the next day, he'll get Tendorps out there picking up psychic vibrations. She told Tom all about his backaches, all about the money he lost in Silver Futures. She found a set of keys that Nan lost in 1969. The European police believe implicitly in her, darling. That's half of why she's here. She's supposed to be resting up from pointing at murderers. Wow. I think you should call Mr. Anderson. You have not got a thing to lose. Darling, it's not the money. I'm okay, which means you're okay, dopey. 
Don't you see, by teaching Mr. Anderson, you'll get yourself started again. Darling, really, I think it is a godsend opportunity. The mace would be quicker. <laughs> He's really contemplating that mace. Do you know what this play would net its author in today's market? Between three and five million dollars. Is this uh, Clifford Anderson? This is a very promising first draft. What sort of reaction have you had from other people? No one at all? Yeah, you're the first to read it. Oh, yes, of course, yes, uh, another thriller. It's based on, on uh, Helga Tendor. It's called The Frowning Wife. <laughs> I love Death Trap, incidentally, both the title and the play. I'll tell you what, you get a train, and I'll come and pick you up at the East Hampton Station. And would you bring the uh, original copy with you? I, I think it's best that we have two copies to read from. I may be a few minutes late. I, I have some errands to run. A murder in the making. What errands do you have to run? Oh, I thought you said something about uh, library books. Oh, I didn't. He's gonna buy a shovel. No one else even knows he's working on it. And he is unmarried. <laughs> Why did you ask him to bring the original? I don't want him leaning over my shoulder all evening, jeering at my ring around the collar, do I? He's really planning it. My goodness. This is Clifford Anderson, my wife Myra. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. It's so nice of you to come, Mr. Anderson. No, no, I, I am very proud to be asked. Is this the mace that was used in Murderous Child? Yes. How many did you do? Uh, just the one. It's, uh, it's kind of a mess, but I think you can decipher it. Death trap. Death trap. Death trap! And it'll be toasted with more than ginger ale someday if Sidney's right about it, and I'm sure that he is. This is Clifford's first play, and I wonder if he wouldn't rather this discussion was just between us two hacks. I don't mind Mrs. Brule being here. In fact, I like it. it. Makes me feel a little bit less as though I've been summoned to the principal's office. <laughs> More like he's summoned to the murderer's office. Wait a second, I want to think. Let me think for a moment. He could turn it into a hit that would run for years and years and make more than enough money for everyone concerned. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion to you, Sydney. I want you to give it your grave and your earnest and your thoughtful consideration. Will you do that for me, Sydney? Sydney, will you promise that you'll do it for me, Sydney? <sighs> Collaborate with him. That's what I think is the fair, the sensible, the rational thing to do. Put aside the drowning wife. I thought it was frowning. Frowning? What sort of title would that be? The drowning wife? <laughs> People are always interested in psychics who can point at someone and say, that man murdered that man. <laughs> a lot of subtle messages. I love it. That was a very persuasive speech, Myra, and obviously sincerely felt. I just thought I should bring it up now, right now before anything. Uh, may, may I have to say, even with all my respect for his, his eminence, his experience, I'd still want to get a second opinion, wouldn't I? <clears throat> I, I really feel that Death Trap is pretty good as it is. Send them off to those agents that you recommended in the seminar. Agents only know about contracts. They don't know about creative... Don't, Mara. Like my husband. Don't beg! On something as speculative as death trap. Why don't... Myra, sit down. Don't hover. I already have The Drowning Wife completely outlined, and I'm halfway through it. And I have a play ready to go next, based on the life of Harry Houdini. These are a pair of his handcuffs. Sydney. He always made his own magical apparatus. Did you know that? Sydney, for God's sake, I don't even believe what you're thinking. Can I talk to you? I must apologize for Myra's suspicions, Clifford. We had a nasty experience with a plagiaristic playwright. Now she gets alarmed if I so much as tell a fellow writer what language I'm writing in. Give them a try. Huh. Well, you, you mean put them on? Hmm. Ah. Turn. Turn. Preface. <laughs> it's all right. I have the key here. I wonder if I put it up there somewhere. Oh, man. Um, I forgot to mention that I should be getting a phone call any minute now. There's a girl who's coming to see me at, uh, at 8.30. So I hope you find the key pretty soon. Otherwise, you'll have to hold the phone for me. You said in a car you didn't know anyone in Quog. No, you see, she's from Islip. Her name is Marietta Klonofsky. She teaches at Stony Brook, phys ed. What number did you give, Ms. Klonofsky? 324-3049 or 324-5457. It was 3049. Both are wrong. Sydney, 
My heart won't take it. Why are you so anxious? You must know that I'll find the key here somewhere. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I do believe that you two thought I was going to take that mace and do a bit of prize, didn't you? Oh, oh. Mr. Brock. Eleven years of tender marital relations, and she apparently believes me capable of well. I think your best invention so far is the name Marietta Klonowski. Thanks. That's not the right key. Oh no, he went for strangulation. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh, dang, it cut into his neck. Well, my darling, your heart seems to have held up quite well. Yo, he's mad. After the opening of Death Trap. I'll go to prison for life. No, we will not. What are you going to do with him? <clears throat> Bury him. He really did it. He really, really, really did it. All for a big hit play. Would you mind helping me carry the body, please? No. Mara, come and help me carry the bloody body! Hurry up! All for the fame and money, even though Mara said that they don't have to worry about money. I think Mara's r from a rich family. I've tidied up the study, darling. All the props are back. I've just been trying to understand how you could do it, Sydney. We both know that it's his play. I can't understand that either. You are... A murderer. Completely alien to me, Sydney. In a month or so, if we haven't been arrested. She's gonna leave him. I want you to leave. <laughs> oh, darling, you've had such a painful... Oh, touch me. Myra, behind all the Sydney Brule dialogue, I am peeing the Sydney Brule pants. I'm terrified of being caught and absolutely guilt-ridden about having been insane enough to do it. I don't believe you. Probably Hilka Tendorf and her famous pointing finger. Or it's Clifford Anderson's girlfriend. Dear lady! Ah! Oh, it's only me! Oh! I'm Helga Tendorf, Mr. Ah. Uh, it's Helga Tendorf, the psychic. There's a room with pain. Oh man. She's the real deal, isn't she? Pain, pain, pain? Why give you such pain, cold thing? Power sells my book when finish. What gives you such pain, dear lady? Nothing, really. I'm oh, no, fine. no, something pains you. I call the information, but the lady will not tell me number. I say it's urgent, but psychic? She says, guess the number. <laughs> uh, no, 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 thank you, it will interfere. The drink you were about to offer me must keep on clouded the head and everything. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Whoa. Was used many times by beautiful woman, but only pretending. That was used every night in my play, The Murder Game, by Tallulah, a beautiful actress. Tallulah? Tallulah Bankhead? Because of play, another woman uses this knife. There's danger here, much danger to you and to you. Is death on this one? The death trap. Whoa. Woods, young man, watch out for him. Here in this room, he attacks you. He attacks me? Yeah, with one of those. Did she reverse the roles? Is in your play is such a black man, the Smith Colonna? No, I don't know that name. Dagger is used again by woman because of play. Or the man in Woods attacks you. Of these two things, I'm certain. Oh, she's seeing the future. H have you always had this gift? Your parents didn't wrap Christmas presents. Why wasting paper? <laughs> <laughs> Come and take dinner with me sometime. I yeah. will tell you all my life. I'd like to hear her story too. Would you open the window, darling? I want a drink. Shall I bring one for you? Bring the bottle. Oh, this is inside the windmill. Sydney! Sydney! I heard it. Sydney, don't leave me. Don't leave me, Sydney. Sydney, don't leave me, please. It's just no, the wind. Don't. It's just the wind. And it's blowing the leaves. Sydney, Sydney, I don't want to do this. Look, look. There better not be a jump scare. No! Nothing there. See? My God, her scream scared me more than anything. What? What is it? <laughs> This was my doing, and 
my doing the love. If anything goes wrong, I don't want any confusion on that point. <laughs> Nothing will go wrong. I promise you. Open the window, don't. No, I'm still expecting a jump scare. Oh, shoot, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. Why does it look like a rolled up newspaper? Oh, she's going for the knife. Oh, dang, though. he How did he survive that and getting buried? What? It worked. What? She's dead. What? Yes, of course. What? Excuse me? That styrofoam log hurts. Sorry. You did it much harder than you did in the motel room. Bro, whoa, 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 whoa. I've been telling people for days that Myra was bit under the weather. Yo, this is crazy. If only that goddamn lousy production had worked. Oh my goodness. Even halfway. This is such a huge plot twist. I didn't want to kill her. I didn't. I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I call the ambulance. We don't want anyone working miracles of resuscitation, do we? <laughs> Farewell, death trap. Would that you were the genuine article. It was a death trap. I'm gonna make the call now so you can get your things. Get into bed. And stay there. What? Bro, another plot twist. Bro, like this has got to be the biggest plot twist of any movie I've ever seen. Oh, he's getting into character now. Dang. This is Sidney Brule. He's more of a bastard than I gave him credit for. I really lost interest in thrillers, Sidney. What I'm doing here is relevant. Let me see a few pages. Uh, I'd rather wait till the whole thing's done. I'll just give it to you in one glorious bundle. This is Clifford Anderson, my secretary, my friend, Porter Milgrim. Wait, Clifford is still wearing boots. Uh, shouldn't I go get the groceries now and you and Mr. Milgram can talk in private? Would you mind? No, I have to do it sometime. Might as well go now. Pretty bad last week. He was crying every night. You could hear him right through the walls. He was drinking, too. Uh, pleasant young fellow. Do you think he's gay? No, oh, it didn't strike me that way. I have a sneaking suspicion he might be. Oh, a sneaking suspicion, huh? doesn't fly on little fairy wings into my chamber. I suppose it's none of my business. I bet he flies into that chamber every night. I don't have up-to-date appraisal on the real estate yet, but this is what you can anticipate. I have no idea there was this much. Well, I hope he's not stealing your ESP idea. Whatever he was working on, he locked it up in this drawer. Unobtrusively, but I noticed. Goodbye, Porter. I'm proud of you, Sydney. If you knew what he'd done, you wouldn't be proud of him. Well, now he's suspicious of Clifford, too. Oh. Where have you been? Gibson's. <laughs> then I stopped by the jean shop. Cliff, can you come in here a sec? Oh. What's going on? Hello? The distrust. Distrust everywhere. Death Trap. A thriller in two acts by Clifford Anderson. The action takes place in Julian Crane's study in the Crane home in East Hampton, New York. The room is decorated with a collection of antique weapons of which I'm about to use any minute, Clifford. This, you asshole, is going to bring you 20 to life in maximum security. It will make a terrific thriller. It would. Could you give me your own special definition of success? Being gangbanged in a shower in a state penitentiary? <laughs> There is no way for anybody to prove what did or did not cause Myra to have a heart attack. A, a playwright! A writer of thrillers! Does a novelist or a composer know where to get a chain that squirts blood? Ah, it squirts blood. I can make it Bridgehampton, not East Hampton. Why make it? Because it's there, Sydney. That's mountains, not plays! Plays are not there until some asshole writes them! Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> 
he's going to have a heart attack himself. Try to see it from an audience's point of view. You see, everything that we did to convince Myra that she was seeing a real murder would have exactly the same effect on an audience, wouldn't it? Absolutely. I definitely know. I wish to live out my years as the man who wrote the murder game, not as the faggot who knocked off his wife. Burn it! Stop right where you are, fella. Now you give it to me. Give it to me! Who's in the wrong and who's in the right? Well, they're both in the wrong for killing Myra. We really, really shouldn't get angry with each other, Sydney. See, that's, that's not what I want. Talk about exactly what it is you do want. I want a shortcut, Sydney, and I really don't give a shit whose property it cuts through, if you understand me. We're gonna write Death Trap, Sydney. You and me. I mean, it's perfect. Everything that you have ever thought of, and a hell of a lot that you haven't, is in print and on the screen. Nobody gives a shit who did what or who they did it to. All they want is to be in on it. And I really think there's some talk about us and about Myra can help the play. Like, there's no bad publicity. If you had the choice between turning out just to hit play and turning out a hit play with dangerous origins, you choose the latter, right? Those little brushes with the authorities in your infancy as twere, did anybody ever use the word... Psychopath? Sociopath. Does that word frighten you, Sydney? It means one who has no sense of moral obligation whatsoever. Are you trying to say that you don't think that you can trust me? How clearly you put it. <laughs> That's up to you, Sydney. <laughs> You can trust me. You just have to be sure that whatever happens, I need you. For instance, like I need you now. You could have put, it, put him in a chokehold right there. Scene one is still coming out a little stilted and heavy-handed. Of course, I could help you fix that. Then do it. God knows I could do with half the royalties of a good solid hit. Porter just gave me the figures on Myra's estate. 42,000 lousy bucks. <laughs> I'll do it. Oh, you mean it? Ta-da! <laughs> Brule and Anderson. Brule and Anderson. And I don't believe it. Me, Clifford Anderson actually collaborating with Sidney Brule. Hmm. Well, Sidney has to act like this to lower Clifford's suspicions. We've got a murder in the first act. I think that act two might be a letdown. Maybe we should bring in a fifth character. You know, a, a detective like one they had in Dial M, huh? Inspector Hubbard. Dial M for murder. Let me do the thinking about Act 2. Act 2 is Sydney planning how to kill Clifford. Backstabbing and distrust. Act 2, on a dark, stormy night. Uh, Mr. Brule should be back in a minute. I come to bar candles on non in cottage. You wear boots? Oh, yes, ma'am. Practically everybody does these days. They're very comfortable. Oh, Helga, how nice to see you. How good to get home before storm. Candles are not why I come here, many candles. But again, tonight, I feel danger here in this room. I asked my lawyer to check up. <gasps> Smith Colonna? Is his? Smith Colonna. The black Smith Colonna, yeah. Are you positive that you saw him attacking me? Very sharp, very clear. You want I should stay? No, there's no need. I told her you were giving me karate lessons and we were attacking each other all over the place. <laughs> I'm fed up with this weather. Cliff, check the upstairs windows, will you? Julian goes berserk, shoots the detective in the left arm. Can a one armed inspector in very good physical condition? Stop a two-armed, middle-aged playwright. So let's let's try it right over here. Why? Don't you remember the seminar? When in doubt, yeah. physical arts. Come on, go! I scratched your neck. Oh, I'll survive. Oh. Now uh, take the axe off the wall. You will notice there's a gun gone. Hmm. We're going to say goodbye. I loaded them myself last night. Are you sure? I don't see any. 46 years old, you're written out, you're practically broke. <laughs> <laughs> what Myra really left, I'll have about a million dollars. Hmm. You'll never get away with this. Why not? I asked Porter to have you checked out in Riverhead. Porter was shocked. 
very disturbed at this possibly quite dangerous young man. I come home and I give you your notice. But you become abusive and violent. Luckily, I get to the gun. Good work, Cliff. Bye, <laughs> Bang, bang. I needed the bullets from that gun. Oh. For this one. How the tables have turned. I had this terrific first act. I just couldn't think of what came next. So I go on drafting act one, and every time I leave the room, I put it inconspicuously in the drawer. <laughs> you rifling my desk, confronting me with the evidence. You're a prick, you know that? Go oh, sticks and stones, Sydney. He planned it all. Now I write, and Sydney thinks. <clears throat> And I do thank you for Act Two, Sydney. Julian finds out Victor is actually writing the real death trap about Doris murder. Julian sets Victor up for what will look like a murder in self-defense by getting him to act out bits of business from the play. Wow, that is simple. It is workable. It's going to play. Julian shoots Victor. But at the very next moment, Inga Van Bronck and the lawyer come in. See, she's called him because she's been getting bad vibes all night. Victor lives just long enough to tell the truth about himself and Julian. And then, Julian shoots himself. Now, here's the big surprise, Sydney. Are you ready? I'm not going to kill you. I'm really not the total sociopath that you'd like to think. If you don't bother me between now and the opening of Death Trap, I'll say, well, yes, I got the idea years ago. I worked for Sydney Rule for a few weeks, but I left. So long, Sydney. Oh, the Harry Houdini cuffs. Dang. Yo, another plot twist. Cliff, those were Houdini's handcuffs. Oh, he's gonna approach him from the back. Oh, oh the cross bolt. Ooh. Ooh. I wouldn't approach him. He could just turn around and shoot. Unless the cross bolt is loaded with poison. Holy. Imagine if he gets up again and gets at him with the axe. <laughs> oh. Matches. Matches. oh, what the heck is that? What was that? Was that Helga? Matches. What? I knew I saw Helga running past. Now you will want to kill me, yeah? Oh. You will not kill me, this beautiful woman's dick. There are no bullets in that gun, Helga. If you don't believe me, check it out. Maybe I'd check it by pulling Tiger. Damn, the lightning, yo. As I thought, he's still alive. I thought I heard the gun drop. How did it even turn out like this? Oh, Helga is stronger than I thought, and Cliff is more resilient than I thought. Get back! Woo! Wait, what happened? What's going on? What? It became a play. Ah! Oh, Inga, you're well out of this! <laughs> what a play you wrote! We're gonna make ourselves a fortune here, Helga! Face the hockey wall! What? Damn. Wow, this was a movie that kept me at the edge of my seat. And the ending was... I mean, so many plot twists that led to this super ending. With Helga being the person who actually ended up making the play. And of course, she won't be suspected for it because the murderers have killed each other. It was originally a play, I think, before they made it in the movie. So it was a play about a playwright writing a play. It's a play within a play. And this play had so many plot twists that, my god, I was just unsteady. If I was standing, I would have been unsteady on my feet. This is one of the best unexpected plots that I've seen in a while. And of course, the props also go to the actors and actresses 
I know Clifford Anderson uh, from Superman. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I saw it as a kid, but I don't, didn't see the whole movie. But I remembered his face from a uh, very old Superman movie. Christopher Reeve, right. And then Michael Caine, I think at one point he... Well, later on, after, later on, much later after this movie, he was Batman's butler, I think. But he's so much younger in this movie. I mean, of course he is, right? I enjoy this movie a lot. The plot, the, the characters, and especially the plot twists, because I love movies with plot twists. And the first plot twist, which was uh, finding out that the target was Myra all along. They were trying to induce a heart attack and then Clifford was in on it. Like that was mind blowing. There was a what the heck, I didn't expect that kind of moment. And it was amazing. It's definitely one of the better thriller movies. You could say it's one of my personal top thriller movies so far. I mean, the thrill, the tension, they kept it there. It was just enjoyable for me. It was also a movie full of mistrust and plotting. Clifford plotting against Sydney and Sydney plotting against Myra and then plotting against Clifford. Then the struggle and the fight at the end, it was the climax. And the movie chose that point to end right at the climax and it was done beautifully transitioning right into a play. Very well done. This is definitely going to be one of my top favorites from Sidney Lumet for the thriller genre anyway. Because this was a thriller for sure. Let me know what you thought when you saw the plot twist in this movie. Were you as mind blown as I was? Share your thoughts and your feelings at the time down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the reaction and I will see you in the next video. Peace.